<laughs> Storch! You're on the juice, mate. On the juice. Oh, juice on the Are you natural, bro? I'm, I'm so Are you on the HGH? <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, welcome back to a brand new year and if you haven't already noticed, we're shooting from a bit of a different angle. We decided to, to change things up a little bit, you know, change is as good as a holiday uh, because we didn't really get one in 2021 or 2022 so far. Uh, now of course, if you are a fan of the channel, uh, we would absolutely appreciate a subscriber, even just a like, it does help with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you were just stumbling across this show for the first time ever and you think I'm just rambling on for way too long, I would agree with you. But you should know that we're trying to become the world's most inclusive community of wine lovers. And this is a blind tasting show, so I'm going to shut up and we're going to get straight to it. Alrighty, we're back. Uh, another week, another six wine. Wine, 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 wine. Nah, we can't do that again. Nah, we can't do that again. G'day guys, my name's Aaron. Called up today to taste some wine, blind taste some wine for the guys at uh, Blind Wine. I work for Applewood Distillery and I sell ochre and gin, so my wine knowledge, not that great. My spirits knowledge, kind of okay. Let's get into it. First up we have what appears to be a pretty good looking rosé. Could be even, I've seen some like Light reds kind of get into this category as well, but um, have a look, sniffy sniff. Like a little salmony, kind of deep little rose style. Looks awesome. Like that kind of nice coppery hue, but there's that like salmon pink. I think there's a little, there's a bit of sediment in there, so might be a nice little unfiltered number, but. Smells pretty, uh, pretty good, I guess is a, is a descriptor. Yeah, that, that works. Juice bomb, bright red fruit, um, tasty. This is a really, really fine rose. This is absolutely fantastic. A really crisp, fine, well-made rosé um, that I certainly wouldn't turn down and I would certainly enjoy many, many glasses of. Yep, definitely that strawberry rosé kind of strawberries and cream vibe that, you know, indicates a really cool little rosé. There's a little like kind of grassy herbaceous element as well that gets me, it, it gives a lot more than your average, just like easy drinking, swapping rosé. So that's always nice. Would I buy that for myself? Yeah, I think I would on a, on a nice hot day uh, by the pool. I could see myself slamming three to four bottles, I reckon, out of, out of the case. Maybe 25 bucks. And, and with six, I can divvy some out with mates uh, and use it as a bit of a cannon fodder wine, which I think this is fantastic for. Um, cool, fun little thing. Numero dos. Looks like basically the same vibe, but it's just a, sh a shade darker. A little bit funkier, a lot funkier. It's very um, almost barnyard funk. Um, kind of the smell you get when you're grooming a horse, if you will, or uh, washing out the stables. Um, and I think I got a little floaty in there, but hey, more protein. Yes, okay, it smells like great Pinot Noir, straight away. Uh, we've got this really great forest floor aromatics with just peppered with a lot of sour cherries and, and raspberries and the like. Definitely more like more acidic and more tart than the other one. Funky kind of element going on here. The finish is a little bit clipped and a little bit short, which is probably due to that uh, little bit of bread that's in the wine. But overall, I find it quite delicious. It's cool. It's um, it's a little bit, I think, natty. Probably is a word that these fellas use around here every now and again. So I'm gonna go with natty, barnyard funk, juice again, but like kind of kind of strawberries at the bottom of the punnet that have been squashed down a little bit in the fridge for a couple of days. Forty bucks a bottle, and I will happily grab a twelve pack of this. This is right up my alley for especially warmer climate drinking. I know right now in Australia, boom, this is awesome. Twelve pack of that in a heartbeat. Uh, yeah, would definitely not say no. Wine number three, so we've got a we've got a nice little nice little white wine. This is a little bit more within my realm. And it's actually got uh, a small amount of frizzante there, so I'm not too sure that it's sparkling or not, but there's definitely a little bit of residual carbon dioxide. You know, it's almost something, maybe it's like a word association thing that when you get a really, really good Riesling, um, you know, it feels like the world is sparkling. <laughs> and this smells like utterly insane Riesling. It smells like high quality Riesling. It's got that cool lanolin kind of uh, expression, but yeah, it's nice and citrusy and sea salty and like very like lime zest and oh yeah now is it against the law to drink here or do we have to no cool because that's tasty i'm having more of that really marvelous waxy texture 
which is making me even second guess the idea that it was Riesling in the first place. Hell, this could be Clare Valley Piano or a blend or something like that. But um, it's kind of, kind of got me a little bit confused here. In any instance, it's a white wine that smells utterly incredible. Yeah, delicious, really nice kind of crisp yet really rounded um, stone fruits from that. And bottle wise, I'd buy case. For sure, I'd buy a case of that. Super, super tasty. I think you should have at least a dozen of that in your cellar because this is one you want to crack on. You want to crack this open like every year, really. Um, but a wine like this could go for decades. And it's just that perfectly made. It is. All right, number four, red wine. Kind of rich red. Looks pretty unfiltered, a little bit cloudy. It's got nice, it's got a little lick of purple at the end. This is a ser serious wine, very, very serious. And certainly sitting on that natural edge as well, like there's there's a lot of reduction here. And it's kind of almost got me already into, um, oh, could be really good gamay. Yeah, like ripe raspberries and strawberries and a little bit of kind of chocolatey kind of thing. Whoa. It's a little bit, Mousy, it's a little bit like, um, as Brendan says, puppy breath right at the back. Um, no, tasty, tasty, tasty boy. It is a little bit not mousy. I don't want to say mousy because um, I don't believe I've got the palate to, to judge whether or not something's mousy. But um, that reminds me that like that finish reminds me of like Nutrigrain. But like think like, you know, those Nutrigrain kernels that you get at the bottom of the bag, the ones that have like been a little bit over roasted. But it has that tannin, then I'm going to stick a pin in it. I think it's the same, stick a pin in it, stick a feather in it, stick a... Feather in your cap. Put a feather in your cap and stick a pin in it. The city is great. The tannin profile is awesome. I love the the really eclectic profile of fruit that you're getting on the palate as well. Yeah, it is a shame about that little taste of mouse, but oh well, I think it's part and parcel with this styles of wine and you just kind of got to accept it for what it is. And I accept this for what it is. Uh, yeah, half a dozen bottles for me. I reckon that's pretty good. Wine number five, a little white number. Also, I'm uh, after points for my swirling technique. Wow, what is that? Um, it's, it smells like honey. It smells like really amazing sort of white floral honey. Whoa, holy shit, that smells like honeycomb. It smells like really candied honeycomb. That's kind of fucking awesome. There's a nice little bit of like custard apple and um, like stone fruit and nectarine. It's giving me Chenin Blanc vibes, which my all time favorite wine, white, grape variety. Not much on the nose there. Not much on the bouquet of that. That's cool. Um, it's a bit boring, but um, it's, uh, it's definitely tasty. It's not offensive in any way. I think this is really, really well made. I want to say Chenin. I want to say Chenin. So I'm, I've, I've just tasted this thing three times because it's actually thrown me for six. I thought it was Chardonnay, then I thought it was Chenin, now I think it's like Muscadet? Down the line, non-offensive. I'd buy five bottles and probably give them to my friends. I was expecting it to be quite sweet, but it's nice and dry. But yeah, I'm really into this. It's just, it's honeycomb. It is pure honeycomb. Um, I'm all about it. Yeah, I reckon this is like a cool little dry Chenin Blanc that doesn't cost the world. I hope this is in the $40 bracket, because then, yeah. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be copping it for sure. All right, wine number six. Cool, another white wine, um, as you can tell from the color. Oh, it smells like white florals, like white frangipani, probably uh, an aromatic yeast of sorts that's been used here, but let's call it modern day winemaking, more uh, conventional style winemaking, but uh, done very well, very pristine. Okay, cool. A little bit more going on in this compared to wine number five on the bouquet. It's got my attention. Better than number five, a little bit more going on. Still pretty down the line, juicy stone fruit. Yes, yeah, slick, oily texture, and then a good kind of like crunchy, chalky acid drive. But overall, it's it's quite it's quite a nice wine, uh, but I'm not that thrilled by it. Very good wine, very incredible wine. Um, I, it's not showing an incredible amount of complexity. I'd probably, in that respect, cap it about $20, $25. I reckon this is like an Adelaide Hills Gruner at like a reasonable price. And I hope it is. Um, if I grabbed the bottle of this on a Wednesday night for like $25, I would be really happy. Would I buy it? Yes, I would. Would I drink it? Yes, I would. Probably just smash it down. We're here for a good time, not a long time. Uh, let's see what the boys think about these. I reckon we've got a pretty big shopping cart. First six wines in the studio for the year. Woo! Um, what do we think? Uh, I had a lot of fun. This I had a lot is, of fun. This was fun. It was up and down. It was quite variable. There's 
different colors, obviously, different methods, different different philosophies. Yeah, some some like some red, some white, some kind of red. Rosé. Yeah, like, whatever that is. Well, should we start at the top? No. Start at the bottom? No. A rosé. Yes. Pretty good rosé. I liked it a lot. It's not I, bad. I yeah. really, really liked it. Was it was cool. It was cool. I wrote my tasting note for that was tasty. Excellent. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, so what 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 have we got, Lockie? Okay, cool. What do we got? We got a new, oh. new way of revealing, so this is going to be interesting. Oh, wow. Okay. It's a terrain. Yeah, sick. Grollo Pinot Noir Gamay Blend. Ooh, this is foo foo. Okay. Okay. I, I had, I literally had this wine a few weeks ago and I didn't enjoy it as much as I did today, um, which is really interesting because that's 15% alcohol. What? Yeah, I'm not even joking. This I, was the one you were talking to me about the other yeah, day. Yeah, legit. Yeah, uh, right. I, was, I was at lunch, I was like, oh, I, I was driving, so I was like, oh, let's have some rosé, I'll have one or two glasses. And then I had one glass, I'm like, I'm tanked because it was 15% alcohol. It was just like, it hides it. Yeah, it hides it. it. Yeah, it, hides looks, it. it looks it looks better today than it did when I had it the other week. Um, it was pretty. I, well, clearly, I like it. All right, number two. I love this. I was like straight straight away based on the. I need to put uh, money in the car for parking. That's what that is. No, I was I was twelve. I was twelve bottles on wine number two. I thought it was fantastic. Off the smell, I was like, it's got to be Pinot. What it is it, Lachlan? Hey. Mm. No, okay. Not bad. And I was down for 12. So Laura's, Laura's going to be happy. Tasmania. So it's probably Pinot. Coup de coeur. I've not had this before. That's really cool. Tell you what, tartrates on a light Look, bulb. Look, there's a little bit <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a snow globe on there. Isn't it? Oh, oh, yeah, cool. Can you shake it up a little bit, Lockie? And I want to... Oh, that's Ooh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's <sick. laughs> it's pretty fitzy. It's pretty fitzy. Really cool wine, guys. That's, uh, that's fantastic. I'm big, big on that. That is like as juice would come in terms of that that sort of expression of this sort of style of wine i think that really typifies it and it's not too you know convective this is classic it's so good it's really good that uh, was one of the lineup for me that was fucking unbelievable i reckon that's australian riesling at the absolute highest order i definitely said fumé blanc um, you could be right but uh no i i had lovely and i i definitely take 12 of those that i'd take old case by the pool, man, like smashing them pretty easily. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. What do we got? What is it? I like it. It's on the lower end of the spectrum. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good for that. If that is residual as well, like that what is a got? punt. What do we got? got? Come on. Oh, yeah. cool. So this is a blend. I think it's a blend. So it's it's Tina. It's Eden Valley. Yeah. Yeah. So this is um, uh, Chaffee oh Brothers. God. Yeah, so they're the guys that do like not your grandma's Riesling, yeah, not yeah, your grandma's yeah. rosé. Okay. Um, this is, I think, contrapunct. Con contrapunct. Yeah. Um, and I believe it's a blend. Uh, I believe it's Kerner. Fuck, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah really, really cool. Um, not the producer, it? the grape variety. The grape variety. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> convenient. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what a um, cool wine. Bro, that's a fucking dope wine. What a cool so wine. So I was wrong with the Fumé. Blanc situation there. No, I just want to get this straight. Well, we wrong. were all wrong. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, so I'm, I'm. Some might say, <laughs> equally correct as you two. Correct, correct. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. It's a win. Uh, moving on to uh, the one that sort of tripped me up. Like we were all smooth sailing until we hit this wine. I thought this was a very incredible wine, but that finish, uh, I struggled with the, the back palate of that. What did, what did you think? French. Um, <laughs> that's what I put down. So I, I. I, this struck me on the um, on the bouquet as being quite uh, quite interesting. Okay, well yeah, this is interesting for, um, for viewers at home because like I agree with you, this whole concept of being able to put something in your nose and just go, oh that's French. What about that screams French for you? Um, oh, I did, I did, I did about six months in a French wine bar a couple of years ago. <laughs> um, and just and flashback. It's like it's now that I'm thinking about it. Um, before when I was doing the tasting, I, I didn't quite get it, but um, it's kind of that Cabernet Franc sort of like it, it's it's really deep and dark and rich like a, a typical cabernet and then that frunk like little weird kinky kind of overtone to it all right so what do we got what is this Loki? this is come this on is put us out of our misery that's um what do we got we're really important la mise a new i missed a new no uh, la mise a new. uh but it's um, gamay it is gamay oh yeah, it is gamay yeah there you go Product Product gamay. i told you french i'm right again <laughs> Uh, col collage near filtration uh, without, uh, I'm not sure what collage is, but I know obviously filtration. Collage is when you get like, collage. you get a lot of different things like artworks and then uh, you put them together. Uh, <laughs> but honestly, for 20, 
$26, was it? That's not a bad get. That's actually a good point because like you spend to get that sort of commitment to that philosophy, you tend to spend double that. $80, this this is which is like, what we're I all thinking. Like Flight number five, I, like I, I thought this was fantastic. I thought this was really, really fantastic. I had no idea what it was. Take us out of suspense, Lachlan. What is it? What is this? Okay. Yeah, I was okay. about 35. I had 40. Ooh. It's a dude. <laughs> it's Jacques Cousteau. <laughs> <Christo. laughs> I like his hat. I love his hat. It looks it looks Italian. You know he's cool because he's in a fedora. No idea. I've I've not encountered this before at all. Fedora ale Italian. I mean, cool label. Um, um and cool wine. Um, yeah, honestly, if you were to walk into a, um, a wine store blindfolded and just grab whatever you could get your hands on first, it's probably not a bad thing to take home. It's definitely interesting, it's fun, um, cool. And you drink it all. Yeah. All right, uh, and the last one, which you can't taste because uh, obviously we all enjoyed it very much. I think Aaron enjoyed it most of the time. I, I, I did, really I liked it. it. <laughs> I liked it a lot. What is this? What is this? Cool. 20 bucks, cool. great, yeah. excellent. Awesome, awesome, awesome. This, any, any pub list needs this. Yolamba. Dude, Vionier, called it. Called it. Wow. Well, good on him. Fuck. Wait, no, that was the last one you called. That was, <laughs> that was the last one. One of these was Vionier. I'll tell you what, though, like the fact that, you know, say that sort of one on a pub list, if I read that on a list, I probably would gloss over it because I'd be expecting Yolamba. it to be so much more voluptuous. Yeah, I'd be exactly. So much richer and denser. If you had the opportunity to chat with your bartender and they, they pulled yeah. you the tasting of that. I think I'd be. Oh excited. yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be like, sick, yeah. cool, done. Yep. Yeah, I would be pretty, I'd be pretty happy with um with charging through that whole thing. And of course, Yolamba, like hardcore Viognier, like you know, producers. Uh, and on that note, um, Aaron. Thank you for joining us. Noah, thank you very much for- um, Continuing uh, to be him. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys, thank you at home for chiming in. Until next week, we'll be here. When am I getting paid for this? <laughs> <laughs>